laid flat, I went back and marked out my shapes. A little bit of an angle, a little bit of an altar this time. So there are four pieces like that. And then I cut them out all the same and taped them together just very lightly so they'll fold. A little piece on the bottom that'll be the base. And then this is the form that we wind up with. So just a conical, easy base. A nice amount of surface there to do some drawing on, some slip, some raised designs. And we're going to carry on from here. This is, I'm also thinking this can be used uh, for the Crete And I'm going to try to do a separate one for that. So I tried a few different textures on the single panels that were for the Crete clay and I think probably these two at the end are going to make pretty nice prints. Always the fun part, peeling them up. So this is one of the textured panels on just a thin rolled slab. Get a hold of the corner and peel that up and get my print. Just some little cardboard panel added on texture. I'm going to make enough of these little panels all the same size to go over a box that we made out of the same template. And that's sitting here with one panel on already. And add a few more and then we'll see how we stand up. So I have the box template, the cardboard box template, and I've laid down one of the printed panels that we made on top of that. Of course I scored all the way down this side and then I've also scored all the way down the next panel. So rather than folding like we did with the little dragonfly pieces, these are actually, it's okay if these have actually even sat and stiffened up a little bit. And you're just going to go ahead your normal process, add a little slurry on there, places where you're scoring and attaching. And you're going to stand up the next panel and connect those seams right over the box, the template, cardboard template form we made. So we're going to do this to all four sides, get all four of our panels on. until we wind up with a base, which in this case will probably be four different textures. So I've got the print, which I really like that one, the print on that side where this texture where the paper was taken out the cardboard, and then the pattern that we made with the leftover pieces. So I'm going to get all four on and we'll come back when it's the base. Okay, this is very thin. I would suggest that you make it a little thicker. I did actually blow out a corner here and here, but I finally got the last piece of my cardboard, so I've got all my cardboard out. I'm gonna go back with a little extra slip. Let's score again a little bit. And those, they've already been together. They know where they want to go. You just got to go back and clean up a little bit again. So at this point, we have a clay bottom on it. And we have it printed on all four sides stand it up on the pedestal so you can see it. <sighs> so 
So, printed on all four sides, the two different prints. And I am going to, you know, I'm going to paddle a little more. I'm going to go back and touch up my corners, touch up my seams that had a little trouble with the cardboard getting out. I'm also going to go back inside and I'm going to score down all of my inside seams and all the way around that square on the bottom. And I'm going to push a little thin coil in there and give it some reinforcement. Always a good idea with the box to go back and put the coils in all of your seams anyway. That gives you extra strength. You know it's not going to come apart in the kiln. So we'll see where it goes next. So I'm continuing to score. I've decided that I'm going to not only score in here on all four of those corners. I'm going to add a coil in there. And I'm also going to go ahead and put my base on. So now I've gone back and all of these edges are clean. I also tend to take my knife and just at a little bit of an angle come down and pull across there. And it just takes off a really small amount, but it gives it a little bit of a bevel. And you see that there's just that little space there between where the edge of the pot stops before the bottom, where the bottom actually sits on the table or on the... That gives me a good place to stop my glaze and it gives the piece a little tiny bit of a lift up. You can see it a little bit more there on the corner. So I've got both textures. I just cleaned up. I would say it's about 15 inches tall. So now I have to make a decision if I want to turn it into a lantern, have it this way, and maybe cut these shapes out, add a handle up here on the top, or if I want to flip it over and have this be the bottom, or I could add some little feet on still to give it even more lift, I could flip it over, and I could open up this and turn it into a base. So we'll see what happens next.